Good evening, everyone. I want to call the October 4th, 2017 meeting to order. Uh, we have a quorum here today. We have five public um, hearings today. The first public hearing is zoning application for approximately 1.3 acres located along Halls Hills Pike and Journey Drive to be rezoned R RM16 to CF Swanson Development LP applicant. Ms. Green. Thank you, sir. This first public hearing is for you to consider a zoning application presented to us from the Swanson LP, Swanson Development LP group here in Murfreesboro. And this property is for property located along Haws Hill Pike and Journey Drive. And you can see identified in the orange on the map before you, Haws Hill Drive, of course, runs um, parallel with the front lot line. This property is currently zoned RM16, and that's multifamily residential district, and it permits a density of 16 dwelling units per acre. Um, you can see that it is surrounded, the contiguous properties surrounding it are also zoned RM16. To the back of the property, to the north, and across Journey Drive is in a developed uh, multifamily development called The Grove. And then directly adjacent to this parcel is a vacant parcel that's zoned RM16. And just adjacent to that parcel is a developed area that's zoned CL, Local Commercial District. Here's a photo of the site, looking at the inner, at the corner of Halls Hill Pike and Journey Drive. You can see it's undevelopment, undeveloped, and in the background you can see the Grove development that I mentioned earlier. And this is just another angle of the site. And then if you, um, then this next image is the property that I showed you, Zone CL, Local Commercial District, and it has a vehicle wash on it, a commercial center, and some self storage. They've got quite a bit on that on that lot there. And um, so I just wanted to kind of familiarize you with the surrounding land use. The uh, city's Murfreesboro 2035 reflects the current zoning for the property, which is multifamily residential district. And of course, it's the applicant um, would need to explain why they want the rezoning and how uh, the Murfreesboro 2035 plan supports that rezoning. I don't know of any specific development plan here, but I know it is their intention to develop it with a neighborhood commercial type use. The property itself is 1.3 acres. So um, although not very large, it would be large enough to support one of the small uh, commercial nodes. The Planning Commission needs to conduct a public hearing after which you'll formulate your recommendation to the City Council. And um, Mr. Swanson, do you have any comments or anything to add to this application that you're making? No, Chairman Way, Commission, Joe Swanson Jr., 1188 Park Avenue. Thank you, Margaret Ann. Um, as to the 2035, I realize that we've made a good plan. We've invested money there to create that plan, but I feel that in this area with the commercial that's already located around it, that this would be an appropriate use. We originally came to this commission some months ago with another plan, but that plan with uh, one of the investors didn't work out. This particular plan is with a commercial service type uh, company, uh, retail. Um, they're a national company, so they're very well known. There are several of their sites already here in Murfreesboro, <coughs> and I would uh, like for you to recommend approval. Thank you. I'll be available for questions after the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. All right, let's open our public hearing. The rules for our public hearings, if you're individual, you have three minutes to speak. If you're representing a group, you have five minutes to speak. Public hearing is now open. Anyone want to speak, come forward. One more time. Public hearing is now closed. Commission. There's no discussion. I make a motion that we approve. A second. There's a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Second public hearing for the night, zoning applications for approximately 29.8 acres located along Stones River Mall Boulevard to re-rezone REM 22 to P, City of Murfreesboro Administration Department applicant. Mr. Bromley. Thank you, Chairman Wade. <coughs> Excuse me. The subject property is owned by the city. It's just to the north of Stones River Mall Boulevard. It's part of the Stones River, or excuse me, the Old Fort Golf Course. And for some unknown reason, it's zoned RM22. Um, the Planning Commission will recall that, that um, uh, just a month or two ago, we basically abolished the RM22 district. It no longer exists, yet we have one 
a portion of one piece of property that's still zoned RM22. The RM22 district is a multifamily residential district that allows a maximum density of 22 dwelling units per acre. Um, as I mentioned, the property is, is developed with the Old Fort Golf Course, the majority of which is zoned P for park, and <clears throat> we have this 29.8 acres still zoned RM22. Well, since there is no RM22 zoning district anymore, staff thought it was a good idea to bring before you, um, and I know our legal department hates the, um, hates it when we say this, but as a housekeeping measure to, um, to rezone the property to a different zoning classification since there is no RM22 zoning classification anymore. So we are proposing to rezone the property to P Park. Um, the Murfreesboro 2035 plan shows the property as uh, or recommends for future land use uh, a park land use, which is what, which works out well because that's what the property is already used for. And, uh, and that's what we, uh, believe that it will continue to be used for for the foreseeable future. I don't think that we expect any different kind of development on the Old Fort, Old Fort Golf Course property. Um, so we bring this rezoning request before you today to rezone the, the um, property to P. Um, we need to conduct a public hearing on this matter and then formulate a recommendation to the City Council. I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. Any questions from the staff before we open the public hearing? All right, public hearing now is open. Public hearing is now closed. Unless somebody's wanting to get rid of the golf course, I'd say P is probably really good zoning for this. So I'm going to uh, move the, for approval. I'll second. First and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote carries. Third zoning for tonight is zoning application for approximately 0 0.14 acres located along West Lyle Street to be rezoned from CH to CBD, Chris Bilbro applicant. Mr. Bromley. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman Wade. Um, subject property is located along the south side of West Lytle Street um, in the block that is in between North Church Street and North Maple Street. It's directly across the street from the property that's being um, developed as the Rutherford County Judicial Building. Um, the area that's been requested are the three parcels that are in blue on the map before you. Um, Mr. Bilbro owns the property where the area arrow is pointing to, that one parcel. That's where uh, he and his wife's business, Cultivate Coworking, is located. Um, and they um, have secured the permission of the two adjacent properties to the west. Uh, to uh, include those properties in this rezoning as well. All three of those parcels are zoned commercial highway, and they are requesting that they be rezoned to CBD, Central Business District. Um, on those properties, especially the western two properties, um, the buildings take up just about the entire parcels, and they're very, very tiny parcels. So to <coughs> redevelop them under the commercial highway zone um, would be next to impossible. The commercial highway zone has a 42-foot front setback, a 20-foot rear setback. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't even know if those lots are 62 feet deep. So um, they basically have no building envelope. Uh, there's no room for parking on site, and parking is required in the commercial highway zone. And uh, it would be difficult to achieve compliance with our landscaping requirements, too. So Mr. Bilbro came before us uh, with an application to rezone these three parcels to Central Business District. <coughs> And upon meeting with him, uh, we realized that the northern half of this block is zoned commercial highway. Uh, and the commercial highway zone really doesn't fit very well with this block and, and with the potential redevelopment of any of it. Um, uh, one, the, the parcel that's on the southwest corner of North Church and West Lytle Street is, uh, is developed with um, AT&T's building, which already encroaches into the setbacks. Um, the parcel that's on the southeast corner of North Maple Street and West Lytle Street is developed with a church that is basically sitting right on the, uh, the property line and doesn't have, uh, has very little, if any, parking on site at all. 
and uh, the Pinnacle Bank, a portion of the Pinnacle Bank parking lot is located, um, is located uh, at the, uh, in, this, in this portion of the block as well. So, so staff uh, brought to the Planning Commission at the last day meeting the idea of uh, studying the entire northern half of this block, the three parcels in blue as well as the other parcels that are in orange <coughs> to rezone them to CBD, Central Business District. Um, and the Planning Commission endorsed studying and conducting a public hearing uh, on both the requested area and the, uh, and the area, the additional study area as well. Um, and so we come before you with this request tonight to rezone the property to Central Business District, uh, which would uh, potentially pave the way for, uh, for future development on these parcels. As I mentioned, the property directly to the north is zoned uh, PND and is developing with the Rutherford County Judicial Building. Uh, the property um, to the west of this block is also zoned PND and it's being developed with the uh, parking garage with just, which just recently opened. And that's one of the reasons why we felt it was appropriate to move forward with this rezoning. <clears throat> the Central Business District does not have any parking requir requirements as I mentioned before. but. Uh, and, and so we would take um, any request uh, to CBD with, uh, or we, we would want to analyze it uh, with regards to parking um, until we have a parking study done that we're currently working on. But with this block being so close to the new parking garage that's, that is available to the public for free, uh, we figured that this block was, um, was a really good candidate to potentially be rezoned to the Central Business District. In looking at our Murfreesboro 2035 future land use map, it actually does recommend that this property be, uh, be used as Central Business District in the future and recommends it as, an, as part of an expanded Central Business District. Uh, this request is also consistent with the recommendations of the North Highland Avenue and Historic Bottoms plans, which also call for an expanded Central Business District. So with the parking garage being so close to the subject property, we feel uh, confident that, uh, that that would address any parking concerns about this being uh, located in the central business district. Uh, with that being said, uh, we do need to conduct a public hearing on this matter and the public hearing, as I mentioned, will be both the, uh, the requested area as well as the additional study area. And then we need to formulate a recommendation to the city council. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. Staff, any comments? All right, let's open our public hearing. Okay. Anyone who wants to speak, please come forward. Oh. Public hearing closed. Chairman Wade, uh, my employer is a, a owner of one of these parcels, so I'll be abstaining for any, from any discussion or vote. And uh, my husband's employer, Ditto, I'll be abstaining. Okay. It's up to you for what? <laughs> I'm Commission. sticking with you guys. I'm on boat. <laughs> <laughs> You're all we got here. <laughs> so where's the wishes of the body? Public hearing. We just closed it. It's closed. Yeah. Do a gavel? I can. <laughs> <laughs> I was told not to. Move for approval. I second. Got a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. And abstain. <clears throat> Two abstain. The next public hearing for tonight is zoning application for approximately 1.1 acres located along East Main Street and Jupiter Place to be rezoned from RS to to 15 to PRD, Shackelford, Harold Shackelford, advocate. Mr. Bromley. Thank you, Chairman Wade. Subject property is located at the southwest corner of East Main Street and Jupiter Place. Um, it is in the blue color on the map before you. Uh, it's located directly to the east of the East Main Quarters Apartments, which is zoned RM16, and that development was completed about a year ago. Um, on the property right now is one single family home. 
the total property is, uh, is 1.5 acres. The subject of this request is the northern 1.1 acres of the subject parcel. Uh, you'll recall that back in 2016, I think it was August 2016, there was a request to rezone this property to RM16, and that, re that request was um, uh, b made by uh, East Main, the developers of East Main Quarters. They wanted to incorporate this parcel into their development for a phase two and develop additional apartment units on the subject property. Um, that request was recommended for denial by the Planning Commission at that uh, public hearing, and um, the applicants at that time chose not to um, pursue that application to City Council. Since that time, the owner of the property and his uh, uh, land planner with Huddleston Steel, Mr. Roundtree, have met with staff several times to discuss potential uses for the property. Um, and the applicants have brought before you tonight a request to rezone the property to PRD, Planned Residential District. And as you know, the PRD zone, uh, with any planned development, what's in the book before you, the pattern book, is what becomes the zoning for the property. <clears throat> so, uh, and that's with regards to the site plan, the architecture, um, the landscaping, any commitments that are made in that um, planned development booklet become the zoning for the property, um, if, if approved, of course. Uh, a little bit more about the surrounding land uses in the area. There are single family residential uses to the north across East Main Street, zoned RS-15. Uh, single family residential uses to the east across Jupiter Place, also zoned RM-16, as well as directly to the south along Jupiter Place. As I mentioned, the property to the west, East Main Quarters, is zoned RM-16. And further to the west is a small commercial node um, that is zoned CL and CF. The CL property is at the northeast corner of Maine and Baird, and it's developed with several commercial buildings. The southern portion of that uh, commercial node was rezoned to Commercial Fringe uh, approximately two years ago but uh, commercial <clears throat> development has not moved forward on that uh, on those parcels. <clears throat> the uh, the request, uh, the, P the the Shackleford PRD is for a total of 12 townhome units uh, that, according to the uh, the PRD pattern book, will be for sale via a horizontal property regime. Uh, the 12 townhome units on 1.1 acres would equate to a density of 11 units per acre, and uh, Mr. Roundtree will, will get up in a moment and give you a brief presentation on the development. The units themselves will, uh, will be the prominent feature of the development as you, uh, as you are looking at the property from the roadway. There will be two buildings facing, uh, or facing Jupiter Place and one building facing East Main Street uh, with the parking to the rear of the units. Uh, the site meets minimum parking requirements. Um, the uh, mail would be, be provided by a mail kiosk and there would be a, a dumpster at the south uh, west corner of the property. And there would be two entrance points on the Jupiter Place. At the Planning Commission uh, workshop meeting when we scheduled the public hearing, the Planning Commission did express concerns regarding the architecture of the building and um, uh, Mr. Roundtree will go over the changes that he made with regards to the architecture when he gives his presentation. With regards to the Murfreesboro 2035 plan, the Murfreesboro 2035 plan recommends that uh, the property develop as suburban residential. And I think that was most likely based upon, most likely based upon the existing use of the property. As you can see on the, uh, the map in front of us, if we could pull that up, the um, large brown parcel in the center of the screen is the existing East Main Quarters apartment complex, and then it transitions to uh, suburban residential uh, with Mr. Shackelford's uh, project. Um, and, and I think Mr. Roundtree will go over this. Uh, this parcel is in a, is in a, um, is, in an unusual position in that it is, uh, it is kind of a transitional parcel. And I think as staff, we definitely feel that um, 
Jupiter place, the block between Jupiter and Apollo, um, there's definitely kind of a, a line of demarcation in our minds that that is single family right there. But this parcel is kind of uh, out there on its own on the west side of Jupiter Place. And so um, we are, uh, I think, tasked with determining whether or not uh, this, this proposed use needs to, or whether this parcel needs to be kind of a transitional parcel or whether the current zoning is appropriate as is. Uh, and Mr. Roundtree in his presentation uh, will make the case of, uh, of why he feels that uh, the Murfreesboro 2035 land use map, the recommendation of suburban residential, um, uh, in his opinion, why it's appropriate to deviate from that recommendation. But with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. And Mr. Roundtree, I'd invite him to come to the podium now. He has a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you, Matthew. Chairman Wade, Commissioners, my name is Clyde Roundtree with Huddleston Steel Engineering. Thank you for the opportunity to present this PowerPoint presentation. I think it should come up here. Are they back there? I'll go ahead and get started just before the uh, PowerPoint comes up. Just first of all, thank you for the opportunity to present to you all. We've had a lot of, uh, a lot of input on this particular site, and we're trusting that we have uh, done our best to, um, to follow the counsel we've been given by the city staff, by the uh, Planning Commission workshop, by the adjacent neighbors. And I just want to let you know that uh, this really was a catalyst, as Matthew said, this is a peculiar site. I don't really think there's a situation in Murfreesboro quite like this one. Uh, at least not that I know of. And the Shacklefords are really the ones who kind of bear the brunt of this kind of zoning anomaly. The fact that the RM16 was zoned uh, many, many years ago, they bought that property with that knowledge that it was zoned RM16. However, uh, no one, including the Shacklefords nor the neighborhood, expected the apartments to come in the way they did. Um, I, I think they're attractive buildings, but they're out of character for the neighborhood. Uh, the scale is something that's qu quite overwhelming. And I think based on some circumstances, the grading made those apartments come out of the ground quite a bit. So, so from a scale standpoint, they're, uh, they're an anomaly to the neighborhood. So we appreciate whatever the neighbors we may say about it because we, we, we identify with their concern over those apartments. But that put the Shacklefords in a situation where what do you do? You know, now you have a nice single family residence on a nice piece of property with, with an ominous kind of situation with these apartments next to you. And you'll see some, some of the photographs, definitely in the pattern book. I'm not sure how well they'll show up on the PowerPoint from a focus standpoint. We can see the relationship, you know, 50, 60 feet separating the Shackleford home from. It won't show up on the screen. Oh, okay. Um, PowerPoint's not working, so that's fine. Um, so with that in mind, uh, they, they've had to figure out how to respond to this particular situation. and. With that in mind, their initial response was, you know, maybe the apartment developers would buy the piece of property from them. So there was a situation that, as Matthew mentioned, that came before Planning Commission for the RM16 to be expanded all the way to Jupiter Road. And that was, that was a determination that was shot down pretty quickly. But I was at the neighborhood meeting where that was introduced. Claude, if, if I'll just interrupt you for just a moment, since, the, since that uh, podium's not getting a signal, if you tell us what slide you'd like us to bring up on the PDF of your pattern book, we can, we can bring that up. And That'd be awesome. Go up on the TVs. That'd be great. That'd be great, Matthew. Thank you. So, so I was part of the history with that neighborhood meeting, so I got to see how the neighbors were concerned, what their concerns were. And there's a lot of frustration over those apartments, and if you've driven by them, you kind of see why those concerns are there. So with that in mind, that brings us to the point where we are now of requesting a, a, a planned residential development for this particular piece of property. But I wanted you to know there's been a lot of history with it. The Shackleford has been a part of that history. I've been a part of that history. So what we're proposing tonight is really what we feel like is, is the best option out of a situation that is a rather negative situation. So with that in mind, since the aerial map is up there, let's go ahead and look at that. That, that shows you the Shackleford home, which is, as Matthew mentioned, it's to the south of that yellow line. But it shows you their proximity to those apartments. So really adjacent to their property to the west 
is primarily parking spaces. And then the apartments are, are, are they're tall, um, so there's basically they've lost all their sense of privacy at that particular location. So one of the things we looked at is that does it remain a single family home that, that they could sell? And that would be a home that I would want to buy, and I'm not sure if you would want to buy it, but maybe someone would want to buy it. So we don't really feel like it's the best use for it to stay as a single family home. So the second option is could it be broken down into smaller lots for smaller single family homes? And that really didn't provide itself as a viable option either. And since it wasn't able to be zoned as apartments and it wasn't be able to really, it doesn't make sense to make it as a single family home, the option we came up with was to make it a townhome development, as, it, as Matthew mentioned, kind of a transition that would take us to Jupiter. But really, the design of those townhomes was really to be sensitive to the situation the neighbors are facing adjacent <coughs> and trying to make a transition to the apartment. So everything about the design is about transition. So with that in mind, uh, can we just go ahead and pull up the master plan? Do you see that one pretty soon, Margaret Ann? Thank you. So um, as you see with the master plan, there's basically three buildings made up of four units. And the keys to those buildings are several keys. The first key is that they all front the road. And we felt like by fronting the road in lieu of having the parking in front of the buildings, that made it feel like more of a residential type of situation. Uh, originally, the parking, we had an access point onto East Main Street and as well as Jupiter, but we felt like there was a lot of concern from our neighborhood meeting about access onto East Main Street from this particular development. So we realigned that and, uh, and just allowed the two access points onto Jupiter. Now, as far as the buildings are concerned, we try to respect the front setback along East Main so it would look in character with the homes that are already along East Main. Granted, past to the east of Jupiter Street, those homes are very, very deep and their property, a lot of them you can't even see from the road. However, on the northern side of East Main Street, the homes are much more you know, presented to the street. So with that in mind, that was the goal. The second goal was to make sure parking was behind the units. That's something else you'd see consistent with the neighborhood. You don't see a lot of cars out in front of these homes. So we did our best to use the, the structures to shield the parking so it felt more residential. And really, the last thing we did that was really key was we're trusting that the buildings and the scale of these buildings can help scale down the apartments. So when you're driving down East Main Street heading west, that the first thing you see are these townhomes that look like single family homes, and Lou is just seeing the broad side of those apartments. When you're heading the other direction, there's quite a bit of foliage. Again, that's been zone CF on, coming from the east, I mean from the west heading east, and that hasn't been developed yet, but right now there's quite a bit of foliage. So you don't really, those apartments don't really strike you as much when you're heading um, east down East Main Street. So really, those are the three components. Addressing the street, putting the parking in the rear of the building, and trying to build the, you know, create the buildings in such a way that the scale of the buildings helps to scale down the apartment complex. So with that in mind, Margaret Ann, can you just hit the elevation? So the elevation has been critiqued, and I think it'll be critiqued a little bit more tonight, but really the goal with the elevation was to make it as much as possible look like a single family home. The original proposal from an architectural standpoint had the homes with a, with a hip style roof, uh, a little bit more, maybe, a little just different architectural character rather than get an architectural style. And after the evaluation from the planning staff to go ahead and try to do a little bit more revision on the actual architecture, we went back and found out that really every home in the neighborhood is a gable type of scenario. A lot of the homes have that double porch scenario that you see there. A lot of the homes have dormers. We didn't particularly put dormers on this particular building, but again, the goal was to make it look more like a single family home. As far as our last meeting, you know, we added a water table, a defined base as we call it so much in our language here, and then we added shutters. Uh, we removed two dormers that were over, or as far as two gable stoops, for lack of a better term, over the, the units on the end units, and just put those with shed dormers. And that was primarily not to have three gables facing the road that really kind of signified something different than single family. And then we have an alternate brick color, and the one below is an alternate front elevation, changing the stone color at the base, changing the brick color. And I talked to Mr. Shackelford, as far as architecture, if we need to present some sort of materials board to help this process so you can get comfortable with the actual architecture. Sometimes markers have limitations on their color schemes. But really, the goal is to make sure that there's the ability to break up the three buildings so they don't all look alike, that we can use the different materials in order to satisfy, the, again, the illusion of them being single-family homes versus uh, townhomes. And lastly, Margaret, if you just hit the landscape plan. And the landscape plan, if you can see, there's just a real strong emphasis on foundation planting. Again, that is something you find consistent in a residential home. 
we try to screen any sort of utilities, you know, from any sort of public viewing. That's where they're in the, between the two buildings, and they're along the, uh, the western property line on the front unit. Um, again, trying to make sure we reduce the amount of impact the parking has on the site, and uh, and really just trying to blend the units together. That the landscaping kind of ties it all together. So with that in mind, that's the extent of the presentation. But I wanted you to understand the logic, and I appreciated your input from the workshop. We did try to modify the architecture. But I feel like we're in a situation right now where we're really kind of trying to figure out what is the best solution for a bad situation, uh, what is fair to the Shackelfords, what is respectful to the neighbors, and what do we believe can be something that you all could uh, feel comfortable allowing us to move forward with. So this is what we, we bring forward. I'm available for any questions you may have for me now. Um, we'll have, a, after the public hearing, if I'd have the opportunity to respond to anything that is said, I'd appreciate that. So if there's any questions for me now, I'm here for you. Thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Any questions for Mr. Roundtree now? Mr. Roundtree, what is the plans for <clears throat> accessing the current home? Is it going to have a back entrance going into it? it? They, they currently have a back entrance that they use. I'm looking at an old Google map, so it's probably already a hole through that wall and mm -hmm. a drive in there. So what are the plans for that? existing home because it's basically pushed up the front of it's pushed up to the side of these apartments one of the one of the neighbors that was their primary concern is is the you know now the anomaly that's created by having these homes in front of an existing residential home after working through it with staff we felt like that, that right now that's kind of another transition element it's allowing the townhomes to transition into the single family that's to the south Long-term plans for the home, don't exactly know. Shackleford still own it, it's still furnished, it's a part-time residence for them. Um, that's, hey, that's not determined yet. Okay, thank you. Anyone else before we open the public hearing? I'm just gonna go ahead and mention, since I'm, we may hear a lot of it, but, uh, and we can talk more about it after we hear from the public, but you know, I, I'm still not feeling really good about the, the architectural look. So I think we're going to, you know, need a lot of work there, and I think the landscaping as well. So. And, and Ms. Jones, I talked to okay. Mr. Shackford about that. We'll hire, he'll hire an architect if we feel like it's something that's moving forward to do some facade studies and, and really to be as sensitive. I mean, again, the goal is to be as sensitive as we can to the adjacent neighbors and the style of their homes. And so if there's architectural details that are not showing up presently on that elevation, we'll make sure they do. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Just a reminder before we open our public hearing, you have three minutes if you're an individual. Speaking for a group, you have five minutes, and please state your name and address when you come to the podium. Public hearing is now open. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Margaret Moore. I live at 1203 Stonewall Boulevard in the city. I am speaking against this plan. I am a lifelong resident of Murfreesboro. Almost 50 years ago, I walked down the stairs of this house to be maid of honor at the wedding of the owner's son and my high school best friend. It was a beautiful house then. It is a beautiful house today. As a native, I have seen many special and unique Murfreesboro structures torn down or compromised in the name of progress or profit. Many of these were lost in the 60s and 70s, but we know better now and we can do better now. I understand why the current owner has become disenchanted with this property. The development that is next to him is unsightly and inappropriate. The commission recognized that fact and stopped its expansion, and for this we are grateful. I wish the house could find an owner to love it and care for it as it is. To add 12 single family dwellings to its front yard can only lead to the ultimate ruin of this entire section of Main Street. How can we protect what is still left if we cram unneeded and unwanted structures on the sloping estate lot? If change must come and if truly quality construction is sought, perhaps four small homes built on the sides with green space between and the original home showcased at the top of the development. But to build 12 units is a travesty of design 
and taints what is special about this area. We know better now. We can do better now. I urge you to vote against this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Um, my name is Carl Ralston, and I live at 319 Minerva. I purchased the house about a year ago, and I've been remodeling it. Um, I think I oppose the um, the development of these three units. It doesn't look like an existing house. It looks like an apartment building to me. I don't know the square footage of these, but um, I think that the proposed architecture would just be an eyesore to the neighborhood. Um, it looks like they're going to be put on a concrete slab from the photo, and that's like they're going to be like sitting on the ground. I would I would uh, agree with this young lady. I don't know her, but I would think three residences. Um, you know, maybe like a you know a nice three hundred fifty thousand, four hundred thousand dollar home would make more sense than putting three twelve you know twelve unit townhouses in here. Thank you, Mr. Klaus. Thank you. I've never done this before. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is uh, Tim Taylor. I'm a uh, property owner in downtown area of Murfreesboro. Um, I have lived here for 15 years. I travel up and down Main Street quite a bit, and I know the Shackelfords. And I've seen the uh, plans for this development. When the apartments went in, I was uh, discouraged because I saw the atrocity of these apartments being built. And now you see this piece of property that's now barren with the backside of apartments facing it. So when uh, Mr. Shackford approached me and said that he was looking at uh, building these condominiums, I asked him to review, that I, if I could review the plans for these apartments. And uh, anyway, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Shackford. I think that they would be a, a nice addition to that property. It would uh, enhance that corner lot and take away some of the view of the back of these apartments that are now exposed to the area. Um, across the street, you have old dwellings. I think that this would enhance that area by bringing it up and want the developers of the commercial area across the street to want to improve those properties also and bring them up to specs to make them look more <coughs> presentable in the area by building these nice uh, townhomes. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, could you give us your address, please? 523 North Spring Street. Thank you. My name is Rick Michelson. I live at 303 Minerva Drive. Uh, the north border of my property kind of abuts the south border of Mr. Shackelford's property. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commission members, staff, thank you very much for giving me the time to talk here. Uh, I recognize that Mr. Shackelford wants to uh, get something out of his property, and I don't begrudge him that. I think that the density of this design is too high. They neglect any maintenance of green space. The front of this, the front lot of this house is beautiful with I counted 16 or 18 mature trees that they are planning on just destroying. Uh, I think it's important that we maintain green space in the downtown area where we can. And I think that uh, I would have to speak against this as it, as it is designed now. And if they could come back with a lower density with some maintenance of green space, I might be persuaded to uh, uh, support it. We won't go into the apartments. Everybody's accepted what they are. Uh, but in my business in medicine, we have a uh, saying that first do no harm. Well, the harm's been done. And sometimes in medicine, harm gets done to a patient. We stop what we're doing and we fix it. We don't try to cut off the other leg to match the amputation that was done. We keep, thing, we keep the healthy part healthy and we try to maintain the health. And I would urge the commission to do the same. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Michelson.
Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Deb Richards and I live at 1621 East Main Street across the street from this property. While I certainly do have a vested interest in what's decided here, my address seems to allow me to hear the viewpoints of many Murfreesboro residents, so I'd like to share concerns on their behalf. First of all, I think that we cannot consider townhouses being put in front of this existing house as though the house is not there. It is there and it must be considered. Our homes are the artwork of our city. There's a scale that should be considered to any project that we would call planned. Even though I'm told that the remaining land around the house meets the RS-15 minimum, the placement of the existing home needs more green space in front of it to give it the, dis the distinction that it deserves. To picture a bank of buffer trees roughly 15 feet from the front door of the house that's not a good solution. The home either needs to be moved or it needs to be the focal point of the development. The project itself is my next concern. It's being described as attached single family, and to me that means it should be compared to other single family residences in the area. Almost 75% of those homes have garages or carports, while these have none. There are older homes, two that are more than 100 years old, and homes rich in architectural detail. The Michelson's home across Jupiter Street is one of the finest examples of good architecture in the city. In contrast, these proposed units are simple, unimaginative stock plans with shed roof porches and underscaled front details that I'm sure are gonna look even more sad against the grand facade of the existing home. I find it disingenuous to say that it reflects what we see on East Main Street. The density and design are more in keeping with student apartments. At the neighborhood meeting, these concerns were raised, but no changes were made. My desire would be for the property to remain RS-15. The owners could sell their house if they don't wanna live there anymore. But I can see that a well-developed plan development could be a fitting alternative for this property I've seen beautiful examples of this done in Nashville along Woodmont Boulevard's estate lots, but this plan is not comparable. Since the last time this property came up, I've been an avid viewer of these meetings on television. I've heard Chairman Lamb praise developers who have worked hard to keep existing neighbors satisfied that a new development was not to the detriment of their properties or to the city as a whole. I'm disappointed to say that I have not seen a good faith effort from this developer in this area. Last month I heard many of Murfreesboro's longstanding developers say that a strong market raises the bar in terms of what's being built in Murfreesboro and our market is strong. So we should be requiring more from this development. This will from now on be a part of our city's landscape. If this property is to be developed as single family dwellings, it needs to be more than a name only and not investment apartments in poor disguise. The amenities such as covered parking, well-designed architectural finishes and details, less density, perhaps a small private green space, these are the aspects which would be attractive to owner occupied units and must be included to protect the integrity of our neighborhood a neighborhood that is still raising up families. It's an eclectic, wonderful place to live and it deserves to be watched after. It is so much more than adjacent property to MTSU for student housing. The planning department recognizes that this is a sensitive property, they said that to me. So let's get it right and approach this with the care that it deserves. It can't help but influence future changes in the area. While it has been presented as the step between multifamily and the existing homes, I'm afraid at this point it is much closer on the spectrum to East Main Quarters than it is to the neighborhood as a whole. I don't have a homeowners association, so in essence that's you. I'm asking for you to send this back to the drawing board. Please deny this request. For Murfreesboro, we can and should do better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richards.
Yes, thank you. My name is uh, Lance Wheaton and I reside at 2039 Higgins Lane. And I'm not gonna be redundant and talk of, about what the apartments have done. Uh, I agree that this is a beautiful, uh, beautiful home. It, it, and I should use the term was, because it's, you know, that's past tense since they put those apartments up. It's just really taken the, uh, the beauty from uh, the, uh, the home itself. So uh, what I would do is I definitely agree with this rezoning of this property and allow the uh, Shackelfords to, uh, to be able to do what they need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prius. Good evening. My name is uh, Henry Phillips. Uh, my wife Kathleen and I live at 327 Minerva Drive. That's uh, about a city block, not quite a city block from the proposed uh, rezoning. Um, my feelings have really haven't changed since our last uh, hearing that I attended. So I'm going to have to oppose this rezoning. Uh, I, I think that harmony and unity are fundamental elements in the makeup of a neighborhood, and I, I just don't feel like this. Uh, this shares that characteristic with the uh, with the surrounding neighbors. I'm looking at the um, uh, the map provided by uh, Huddleston Steel. I don't know if you have that in front of me, page eight of the site plan, and I superimpose that site plan on the actual aerial map of uh, the site, and it it just seems like this proposal this development is more in character with the with the apartments to the left and I, I think that's what we're trying to avoid I, I just feel like that is a um, it just has more of that characteristic feel if you look to the right of the on the aerial map you'll see what's more in line with the neighborhood if you were to zoom out of that you'd see that that's that area is just not anything like is, is what's being proposed. Certainly the area is nowhere near 11 to 12 homes per acre. It's just, it's just not. I, you know, I've said before in these meetings, I love East Main. I love, I drive down East Main every day and, and I love East Main, I love Murfreesboro. And I, I just wanna tell you, I miss the seller's place. I just really miss seeing that lot. It's so, it's so beautiful. So. I, I feel for Mr. Shackelford and his wife and his family. I feel for their, their, the place they're put in, but I just don't feel like this is a good, good fit for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. I'm Charlene Taylor. I live at 816 East Main Street, and I'm happy to speak um, before you, the commissioners and members of the staff of the Planning Commission of the Planning um, Department here in Murfreesboro. I wanted to point out to you that uh, late yesterday or earlier today, you received what is a permanent inclusion document for myself. It is in the form of an email that I would ask you to be reminded of for it to be submitted just as that. And I come to you um, appealing that again, that you would reconsider this on something though that Dr. Michelson, that Rick said, we're not talking about, this is a leg of a person, a lot of people. This really represents an entire community. Main Street does that well, and its residents. This is, this is a leg of Murfreesboro itself that we're talking about. It's another wrong to a wrong. Now the Shackelfords um, are fine people. I know Jennifer Shackelford personally. And they are able to evaluate and look at this plan, site entrances, hire an architect. What Mr. Roundtree has shown you and has omitted severely is a photograph of their home. The question was posed, what do you do with that? Is it going to be what? 
And the comment was, well, no one's going to want to live there. Does it disappear? Is it, what, what happens to this historic home? See, the reason why it's omitted is because the, let's call it a tinker toy, a step, a pop-up drawing, not even an architect's drawing was invested here. Why? Because it wasn't deemed by the owner to be worthy of an investment. An investment to put in what the surrounding area deserves. That is a shame. That is unconscionable. Because what you see is close to a Lego situation. Pop it up, pop it down. Hey, we have to do so much more than that and require that. I think you all do realize it. It's shameful that in all those photographs, you did not see the house, the architecture, the interior itself, which is another question. It, it's, it's a passionate topic, a passionate subject for many people, those absent from here. We're counting on you again to hold the promise of the Murfreesboro Plan in place. It is not intended to have other dwellings. They've not tried to sell it perhaps on the open market where an architect that really could do something with that property could have vision. It is a tragedy what has happened to them. And I don't know myself what I would do, but I would, I would do my best to present to you the best plan with the resources I would have to show you what those materials and the composition would look like. And I would not omit the home that I lived in for 17 years and was proud of. You all see a lot of plans. You require a lot, which has made Murfreesboro the awe moment it is today. I've grown up here. I'm from here. I was born here. I'm very proud of Murfreesboro. And I'll look at each of you with that. You are too. This is not something you're going to be proud of. You know what a serious plan looks like, and you know the efforts that go behind a serious plan. I would also point to you that there are other neighbors that didn't even know about it, but that's not the story. The story is where do we stop? And I think we, uh, we look at the leg. We look at the common structures, and we look at the street and the traffic what it is. The traffic, people that come up and down Main Street for viable reasons. That's my appeal to each of you. To each of you. And it's with great appreciation. I want you to know you're not, we don't share that enough with this body. You are to be commended for some very tough decisions you've made. This is minor. But please, look at it very seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Anyone else? My name is Jean Bills, and I live at 1619 East Main, which is also across the street from this property. Um, I didn't come with a prepared speech, but I've listened to what others have said. And I think the thing that bothers me the most is the fact that that is a beautiful area, and I'm partial to trees. <laughs> and I just hate the thought of cutting down all of those trees. I wish that something could be done with that area so that some of those large trees could be, because I, I notice on the plan, it says, uh, it shows trees, but they're little trees, and it's going to take them years to uh, look like the trees that we're looking at across the street right now. And I would be much in favor of a plan that, well, as the person who spoke before me, <laughs> Uh, if we could really uh, work on getting something more creative if we need to use that property. But we have said there are several things on East Main Street where there's been a house 
and there's been apartments built in front of it. I think it looks really tacky. And I'd hope that we could do uh, the best possible job to keep that area uh, looking as beautiful as it does. Thank you, Thank you. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Bills. Anyone else? I'm Harold Shackelford. I maintain a residence at 2929 Penn Darvis and the property here, 1620 East Main Street. Um, I need to get a couple of rumors out of the way to start with. Um, it was out there that I sold the property next door to this property to the apartment complex. And as you all know, uh, that was uh, an estate sale. I had no part of that. Uh, the other rumor was that I, were, that I was building this uh, proposal or put this proposal forward to uh, have rental units, and, and that's not true. Um, the apartment complex has, to us has changed the whole feel of that area, and it's changed the looks of our property. Um, the reason for this rezoning is as a, to us, as a single family resident, residence, it has lost its appeal. Um, the apartments are there. I mean, they're just there, it, it, it's been done. And I, and I understand uh, a lot of the neighbors' concerns about um, uh, what we're proposing here. But I did hire Huddleston Engineering to represent me and I told them that I wanted to uh, do high-end properties there. And I've had eye surgery in April. I've kind of been out of commission, but I felt like that with Huddleston's reputation and with the planning committee and the, the city planners that, that y'all got together and came up with what would be right for this corner. Um, now, if you look at Main Street from Middle Tennessee up, you've got a more consistent homes and, and, and that sort of thing. But as we stand today, the 1620 East Main property is the only residential property on that block. The, um, the property at Barry Lane, those two homes, the Demence had rezoned. The next home was rezoned and it was turned into a uh, office for the apartment complex. Um, <clears throat> I'm willing to do whatever it'll do to, to, to satisfy the neighbors if I can. Uh, this is my first uh, uh, development. And so you have uh, the estimated cost to get this site ready was about $200,000. And I was told that, that we're trying to make it acceptable for the neighbors and try to make it a transition piece of property. Um, I have lived there for 17 years and uh, I do appreciate the property. Um, however, we have had people come to us and say, we can't believe how that has destroyed your property by the looks of those apartments. It's just taken the whole uh, I don't know how to say it, but the whole pride away for the property. The, the house is a nice house, and we would like to have a development that would be nice. Um, now, I had uh, gone around and talked to different people and showed them the proposal, and I started off with uh, Randy Odom, who is right across the street from me, on, uh, across Jupiter. <coughs> Uh, he backs up to Dr. Michelson. Uh, he's the first person that signed my petition in favor of this. I did that to get a feel for my neighbors. The second person I went to um, was Mr. Anderson who lives right behind my house. And he, sound, he signed off on it and said he was for it. Um, I talked to Mr. Rowland who lives beside of uh, Mr. Anderson, and he said he was for it. Uh, so we have friends and neighbors that we have talked to, um, 
in the Murfreesboro community. And I have petitions that I would like to, to present. Uh, people say, you know, it looks, good. it looks okay to them. It looks good to them. It looks better than what we have now coming down Main Street. You look at the large apartments, that doesn't look well. It just doesn't look well. From the back side of my property all the way down the driveway, it's parking facing my property. So I was hoping that Hulston Engineering with their, with their reputation and with working with the city that uh, we could come to something that uh, we could work with. But uh, anyway, we, we've been put in that position and, and uh, we, uh, we would, you know, we would love to have that property stay the same. If the seller's property was there, it, <clears throat> we, we enjoyed it um, like everybody else. But if you go up the street, you've got the old shopping center. Uh, you've got uh, uh, a building up there painted, I think it's blue or purple. Uh, this is not historic downtown Murfreesboro. It's just not. Um, so I'm open to work with Huddleston to, to uh, try to satisfy the neighbors. And yes, I want the home to, uh, to, to have its, its glory, but uh, I need some help from some other folks too. So, uh, but I would like to present the petition and uh, I, I would, as um, some of the others said, I want, I want to appeal to you to, it is a unique situation with this property. So it doesn't look good or right the way it sits now. So with your help, maybe we can change that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chuck. evening. I'm Jennifer Shackelford. I'm the other resident of the 1620 East Main Street. Uh, I just wanted to put just a little bit of a personal um, alternative or uh, explanation about the situation that I found myself in a couple of years ago. I woke up one morning and there was a big sign next door for sale, multifamily, da da da. So we thought, well, maybe I, I discussed it with um, someone that works at the peddler and we were talking, well, she said, well, maybe they'll build, you know, condominiums or something over there that would be nice. There's people who probably would like to downsize and move there. So we thought, yeah, that sounds good. So not too long after that, <coughs> um, the wrecking crew drove up and started to knock down the seller's house. Uh, that began a, a period for us of just utter, it was a form of grieving because of what was happening first to the seller's house. I could see my house being knocked down and I knew, I, I couldn't imagine what that felt like. But the more the apartments went up and were developed, um, I began to realize that they weren't going to look like what I had hoped. They weren't going to look like Main Street. They were going to look like maybe they went somewhere else. But anyway, the house is uh, very dear to me. I've spent a lot of time decorating. We've done a lot of things to it. And, and the last thing that I ever wanted to do, and it breaks my heart every time I see the beautiful trees and the grass. And my grandsons are growing, mowing the yard now, and he's making the stripes, and they look so nice. And, um, you know, we were put in a really tough situation. And when you wake up in the morning and someone in the back of you in an apartment could look in your bedroom if they wanted to, and, you know, you can't open your shutters because you just feel like whether or not anybody's looking, you feel like someone is. So that just, I wanted to put a personal side of it because we, we've been hurt by this and uh, realizing we want it to be pretty there. I love that house. I don't want anything to mess, to, I didn't want it knocked down and I'm happy that it is not going to be at this point. But anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Sharon. Anyone else before we close the public hearing?
not, public hearings closed. Staff, I think um, we t had comments about green space, carports, garages, what's gonna happen to the house, trees. Yep, Chairman Wade, I, I, I heard a lot of comments. I don't know that I heard a lot of questions. Uh, one of the questions that I heard was um, Mr. Is it Ralston? Yes, Mr. Ralston asked what the square footage of the homes would be. Uh, the minimum square footage it listed in the pattern book is 900 square feet. Um, with respect to, um, I don't know that I heard a whole lot of other questions that I can answer. M most most of the speakers <coughs> had 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 comments, but if if the planning commission has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, Vice Chairman, I'd just like to point out we did have a neighborhood meeting. It was fairly well attended. A lot of the same comments uh, that you've heard tonight uh, was spoken. Uh, I would point out, and we're just not good or bad or for or against, but you know these are this is a large RS15 lot, and it could be subdivided into uh, RS15 lots. Probably, I'm guessing Matthew probably three additional lots. It could be subdivided in. I'd say uh, max of three additional. If if they chose to because I know that was spoken two or three times tonight that they'd rather see uh, you know single family homes and I just want to point out that that is a possibility it is that large it could be and probably we're estimating about three additional which would be four counting the original uh, they are correct the house is not included in this plan development so it would not be covered uh, it is outside of that the owner did speak to the fact that the house uh, you know, I, had, I don't think he said any intentions to uh, tear it down or just let it remain, but it is not included in the plan development book. Thank you. Commission, any comments? I'll comment uh, not to open up old wounds, but when, when we talked about this parcel uh, in 16, um, I felt then that this parcel was going to become an island based upon uh, the fact that by right those apartments were built and felt that transition would be Jupiter place and then to go ahead and uh, allow the apartments to be built all the way to Jupiter place which uh, I, none of the board members agreed with me nor did the audience um, so that being said uh, yeah. uh, I do I, I, I still believe then that this is a transition lot. Uh, it, 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 it's been made what I would call an island based upon the fact that uh, these apartments have been built. Um, I was not at the work session. I was out of town, so I, this is the first time that I've seen this plan. I think that based upon input both from the neighbors and the planning department and working with Uddleston Steel and the owners, uh, the Shackelfords, that hopefully that we can come up with a better plan uh, and everybody be in agreement that this in all likelihood, at least from my perspective, is going to have to be treated or should be treated as a transition lot between the apartments and uh, RS-15 zoning. But that's, at this point I am, uh, would vote against it, but I wanted to say why uh, and what my thoughts were with respect to my vote. Any, and I'll, um, I, I do like the general concept of what you're trying to do. Um, when we did look at it, uh, when they were asking for the rezoning for the apartments, you know, afterwards, I, I thought, you know, maybe this, this, this is exactly what I thought might work for this lot. Um, but I do think that we would have a long way to go to get it to be to something that is, I think if we're going to do something like that, it needs to, like, wow us. Um, because it is, you know, I agree that it's a very special place. Um, it's a special part of our city, and I think everybody loves up and down East Main Street. Um, and I, I 
think it needs to fit in and, and look like it's going to fit in. I, I don't feel like we've got uh, the best possible plan for this lot yet. It just needs some more work. I'm not the creative one. I can't tell you what it needs to be. Um, but there's somebody out there that can. Uh, whether it is townhomes like this or whether it is separate single family lots, more like some of the ones that we've seen in the Green Hills area in Nashville that are among all these other beautiful homes and they come in and build new ones uh, that still seem to fit in. Uh, if we could see something like that and to be able to, you know, I don't know if the existing house, if we're going to have to have it almost have a new some way a new facade on the side of the house that makes it look like it fronts on Jupiter Place or something done to make it, you know, orient like it's looking at Jupiter Place. I, I don't know, but I, I just don't feel like we're there yet, but I, I'm not opposed to the direction it's going. I think the last time we were, when we uh, spoke at the last meeting when we were at the workshop, I, I think the biggest thing for me is still the, it, it's not there on the facade yet to, to be in keeping with the community. Uh, I agree that it's gonna, it's gonna need to be a transition lot it's not going to be uh, more than likely. It, transition means it's going to be between single family and all of those apartments. It doesn't mean it has to be single family, but it has to look really good to fit that neighborhood. So, and I, and I think if you present a plan that looks really good, really high end, that fits that neighborhood, the neighbors will probably like it a lot better. Um, you know, that, and that was kind of my comments on the last time of if you want to make this feel like a house it's got to really look like a house I will follow suit and agree that it's um, definitely appropriate for a, tr a transition piece I think it makes a lot of sense I think what's missing is just taking advantage of the opportunity with what you can do with it and it sounds like you're willing to do that um, you know Simple things like being close to the front of the road, what you're doing here, keeping parking in the rear, those things are going in the right direction to make this a, a positive piece. Um, and I think up for debate is does it have to look like a single family home? I think somebody even mentioned other developments in other areas in, in Nashville that um, can create a lot of curb appeal and, and, and really blend with the neighborhood. Again, transition from what's happening uh, down the street uh, and, and address that corner may not really ne necessarily need to look like one big solid residential piece, but the opportunity to change that architecture is, is, is really there and, and could be easily achieved. I, I do also um, wonder about our responsibilities for you know, making decisions here and what that does to the existing house and how much that setback from the front of the house ends up being and, and the buffer there that really seems so minimal looking at this. I know the green color in the site plan is, is doesn't truly represent how much green is in front of that house, but there's more green space in front of the of the proposed project on, on East Main and it really just starts to neglect the beautiful curb appeal and the front entrance and um, I would hate to see that existing house um, go, go downhill for some reason or take away from the rest of the, of the neighborhood or impact the existing neighbors um, by decisions made for the development. So I, I do have some concerns about that. Um, I heard some discussion about the inconsistencies up and down uh, the street there with some of the different businesses and some of the other developments uh, that have um, obviously been put in place. And again, this is just a perfect opportunity to um, better what's already happened there. Um, and I am in agreement that, it, that it's a, a transition piece of property. I, I think if 
Mr. Shackelford, your intentions are doing what's right for that corner. We're, we're coming up a little short. A and and I know you're trying to make the neighbors happy. And, and, and I think you're as sincere as anybody that's ever come to that podium to, to say, I'm trying to do what fits with the neighborhood. I, I, don't, I don't question that at all. I do think that the project that you presented has come up short. And, and, and I'm not just following suit with what everybody else has said. I thought it before we even opened this because I, I asked the question, what's gonna happen to the house? Um, ride past the house every day and, and truly I, I look over that way. And even at the apartments, I look over at the apartments on a daily basis. And, um, and I think the, the apartments are maturing with the, the growth of the vegetation around them with the uh, new signage and stuff that it has in front of it. The, the, the apartments are, are improving, um, but, you know, and, and I know everybody's comments seem to be negative about the apartments, but apparently they never turn around and look what's behind them when they're standing in front of the apartments because the old strip mall and, and the, the, on Google here, they're green, the buildings are uh, kind of a lime green color, which is about as unattractive as you can get, the hookah bar and the smoke and tobacco shop and, uh, the little restaurant that's there at, uh, um, it, on, a, on a Main Street scale of appearance, I'd say they're about as close to a D or an F as you can get uh, as far as what the neighbors of that neighborhood expect. And uh, no Main Street, I don't guess, has an HMO, but uh, I do think they're a close-knit group and they communicate well and, 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 and they do a really good job of holding a very high standard. Um, the, um, and I think that standard is what they're looking for. Um, Ms. Richards, I think, had the best comment of, the, of, of everything that I listened to and, and, and struck me when she said, raise the bar. And I think that what we're looking for out of your development is something that doesn't just fit, but something that improves the situation. And, and I'm not talking about just improves the situation by having a single, it, it's not your responsibility to provide them with green space. It's not your responsibility to provide them with beautiful old trees. But, but, but it's your property and you have the right to develop it and I want you to develop it how you'd like. But the, the, the thing is it needs to fit and it needs to raise the bar of that community. And, and I think that uh, this plan has just, uh, it's come up short uh, of what the expectations are. Uh, I, I kind of agree. The, the, the pictures look more like Legos than they do a, a, a real house. And it, uh, the, uh, it's, it's kind of disappointing the, the level of um, the presentation that's, that, that's given here as far as the, the appearance of the property because I, if, I often say, you know, when somebody's looking about a PRD, I, uh, I look at it in every detail and, and look at the shutters even and say, do those shutters look like they fit with the project in the neighborhood? And in this case, I mean, yeah, there's some shutters on there, but they look more like little rectangles than they do shutters. That's not, a, that's not something I can hold you to later on and come back and say, you lived up to what you presented the neighbors and said this is what we're going to present and build here. So, so I think you came up short um, uh, with, the, uh, with the presentation. Um, the, uh, the growth that Murfreesboro's experiencing, we're, uh, I think I heard on the radio this morning, 12th in the country as far as growth. The demand is there. Uh, there's certainly people that are wanting the homes. Uh, I personally would encourage you to go up by the main entrance zone uh, at MTSU's campus and look at some of those, uh, um, I don't know if they're townhomes or apartments, but they're extremely attractive um, townhomes or something that's across the street from the, the main entrance sign there. And uh, I think those are very attractive. I think the uh, what's going on next to the boulevard is extremely attractive and fits in with the neighborhood. And uh, that's kind of the, uh, the type of thing that I personally would approve if it were to come back. And uh, so um, I, I hope you continue to pursue what, what's best for you and what's best for this property. But uh, I think uh, you've still got a little work to do. Thank you. Mr. Roundtree, I think what you've heard from the commission, come on to the podium while I speak. I think what you've heard from the commission as well as everyone in the audience, we want what's best for Murfreesboro. And I think what's best for Murfreesboro is we've got to come up with a better plan. Can I respond, Mr. Wade, real quickly to a few things just for direction purposes? 
Uh, as far as the, the biggest concern I have is if you, if you feel like it's a transition site that allows us to have some sort of townhome product, that's what we really need to know. Because we can, we can modify the architecture again. The goal with the mass building structures, granted they could be more consistent with the existing homes down the neighborhood, that was really to respond to the grandness of East Main Street. If we can move into more of something you see along the boulevard, our client would be thrilled. It was all a response to try to be sensitive to the neighborhood. The thing I think is something we really have to understand though, when you talk about single family, it really, there's a lot of issues as far as having a backyard against the apartments, having privacy issues against the apartments, having three homes against, that doesn't make any sense to us. So we would like to defer to get our, our architectural product in a much stronger format yeah. to, to, to do our best to address the neighbors. But we wanna know, do we have direction that we can go with a townhome versus a single family home so we really know how to go architecturally. Mr. Roundtree, I, th I agree with you. I think the, the things that about the apartment complex that hurt the current Shackleford ho home would hurt the value of the property if you built three retail uh, uh, residential homes down through their standalone residential homes. And so I, I, I think it is a transitional lot and I, I'll let everybody else speak for themselves, but uh, the, I, I agree that it's a transitional lot I think it just has to work better with okay. something that raises the bar rather than just fills a void. Thank you. With that, Mr. Wade, we'd like to defer until we get our architectural s to a standard that we feel like is acceptable to the neighborhood as well as the staff and planning commission. I, I just, uh, one comment, you, you asked for direction, I'm gonna give you my opinion. One is, I, you know, I, uh, I like what Eddie was talking about with respects to the, the townhomes that are on or next to Boulevard. I think, I don't know if, uh, uh, if you know, 12 is the right density or not. I think that's one thing that you need to look at. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, other piece of the puzzle is I'm a little lost uh, that, you know, we're doing a PRD just on this, uh, this area but we are, we have no, we nor the neighborhood has any uh, control uh, based upon this PRD with respects to that house. Okay. So in my view, I think we need to have the, uh, as part of the PRD, what are we doing with this house? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I agree. That. So, Mr. Bromley, you have something? Yeah, Chairman Wade, <clears throat> um, if, if it's the consensus of the Planning Commission that the, um, that, that back four-tenths of an acre with the house needs to be added into the PRD, um, that would require another public hearing um, because that would add that in there. And I think that might not be a bad thing because if he comes back with a substantially different plan, um, uh, I think it has to be a substantially different plan for us to, I, I think we'll have to have another public hearing. I'm sorry, everybody might have to come back, but I think they'd rather come back than us just maybe go ahead and approve something. Um, uh, I mean, it sounds like that if we're gonna, if, if everybody's in agreement that we're gonna include the house, that we need to deny this uh, application versus deferring it. Here. Are Another, you an, well, I, I am checking. Miss <laughs> Green had a good idea as well. If um, uh, they could, you know, rather than the Planning Commission taking action, they could choose to withdraw the application tonight um, and then resubmit a different application. It's more like a brownstone. But l let me see what, if you deny it, let me see what effect that would have um, as far as them coming back. It's a different plan. Yeah. Matthew, I think if, they, if attorney. it's a different plan, they could actually come back. They could. If it's substantially different, you know, they would have, to, and what it sounds like from that the Planning Commission is going to expect something substantially different, uh, and so they wouldn't be bound by the, uh, uh, the eight, I believe it's 18 months of, to come back with I think the, the same plan. The 18 month requirement is, is um, after a first reading by council, so I don't, think that there is such an 18-month waiting period if it's 
recommended for denial by the Planning Commission. Just after a cursory review. But, but in any event, if they come back with a substantially different plan, then there's not going to be a waiting period issue. Exactly. And I think if you if you deny tonight, I, I don't think that will have any impact on their timetable in coming back. Okay. Is there a motion? Make a motion to deny the request. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion not. All right. So thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for your passion on both sides for this uh, rezoning, and um, hopefully we can get it right. Last, um, Kurt, for, for the record, I, th I just, I, th I think it's important that we mention the fact that the apartment complex multifamily that was put on that complex or that property where the apartments are, that was done about 28 years ago, I think is what I was told. So it, it was done so long ago that I, I'll assure you there's nobody up here I don't think that would have approved that project on, at this time uh, in retrospect, but I, but I do think that uh, yeah. um, it's, it's probably worth <laughs> mentioning the fact that um, the situ we're, we're trying to improve the situation that's already been created, and, uh, I, and I think um, that's, that's where we're at right now. So just for clarification, um, the multifamily, um, it was done a long, long time ago. Thank you, Mr. Smo. Our last public hearing for the night is zoning application for approximately 2.7 acres located along Raglan Avenue to be rezoned from RS10 to PRD Walker Station PRD Sourceland LLC applicant. Mr. Bromley. Thank you, Chairman Wade. Our next public hearing is for 2.7 acres located at the eastern terminus of Ragland Avenue. Uh, the property is developed with one single family residence and it's zoned RS10. Um, the applicants have come before us with a, rezone, with a rezoning request to PRD, Planned Residential District, for a PRD entitled Walker Station. And you have the PRD in your, uh, the PRD pattern book in your agenda materials. Uh, the property is, um, is uh, at the, as I mentioned, at the eastern terminus of Ragland Avenue at kind of the, uh, the east end of several subdivisions, including the Pascal Ragland Court and W.E. Mason subdivisions. Um, the property is largely undeveloped. Uh, there's actually a portion of Ragland Court and an unnamed right-of-way that does not show up on the, on the map in front of you. There's an unnamed right-of-way that actually extends southward from Ragland Court to the university's athletic fields. And that leads me into a uh, discussion of the, of the surrounding land uses. Uh, directly to the south, as I mentioned, is the uh, the university's um, uh, athletic fields um, to the east of the subject property are some single family and uh, and two family uses I believe some some duplex uses that are owned by the university as well as a parking lot that's owned by the university on City View Drive alumni drive and uh, campus proper are located to the north of the subject property and to the west of the subject property are a number of single family residential homes, some of which are owned by the university and some of which are still privately owned um, to this day. The university has, has bought a large number of single family homes in that area, um, mostly occurring, I believe, about uh, seven to 10 years ago. Uh, the proposed PRD would allow for the um, development of 23 single family detached homes on the 2.7 acres. These 23 single family detached homes would not be on individual lots of record, but rather would be uh, sold via a horizontal property regime, much like the Tuscany development that's under construction on West Thompson Lane or the Poplar Grove development on Pitts Lane, which was approved by the Planning Commission and City Council um, last month or the month before. Uh, Mr. Mulcham will get up and give a brief presentation on the um, on the proposal, and I will tell Mr. Mulchan that the PowerPoint is still not working. Um, so we'll be happy to assist get, getting you slides up on the uh, on the screen. The Murfreesboro 2035 Comprehensive Plan, which was adopted in July, recommends that the property develop as public institutional. Oh, uh, I've been told we have PowerPoint. So, Mr. Mulchan, 
is lucky. Um, at any rate, the 2035 future land use plan recommends that the property develop as public institutional, and that is no doubt um, with the expectation that the university would purchase the area, as you can see, and if we could pull up the, um, the computer screen, the other computer screen. Thank you. Um, the area in light blue is the area that is um, that is projected as being developed as public institutional, no doubt, to accommodate the future growth of the university. Um, however, uh, uh, the developers of this property have been in contact with the university and the university has indicated to them that they have no intentions of purchasing this property at this time, which leaves the property in somewhat of uh, a certain amount of limbo with respect to its future land use. If, uh, if the university does not wish to purchase the property, uh, then what is the best land use for the property? And so the applicants have come before us today with a plan to develop it with a single family residential use at 8.6 dwelling units per acre. And uh, now I'd invite Mr. Molchan to uh, give his presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. Thank you, Matthew. Um, good evening, Commissioner Wade, members of the Planning Commission, Rob Mulch and SEC. On behalf of Sourceland LLC, I'd like to present to you Walker Station tonight. Uh, as Matthew alluded to, this property is directly south of uh, MTSU campus along, uh, actually, Alumni Drive is to the north of the uh, site itself. The property itself is more or less a landlocked portion of land that is the terminus of Ragland Avenue. Um, to, as you can see in this aerial photo, the Ragland Avenue actually extends into the property currently. Um, to the north, uh, you have the main body of the campus itself with athletic fields. Uh, you have also the uh, fraternity row and some of the uh, on-campus housing. To the south, you have some more of the campus itself. That's the athletic fields complex. But surrounding it is more or less residential. As you can see on the zoning map, this property is currently zoned RS10, so it's already in a residential zoning classification with campus surrounding it. As Matthew talked about, this is portion, this portion of the new 2035 land use plan is a portion of this property is actually in, encased within the institutional use. As Matthew talked about, we did make contact with MTSU about regards to any potential use for the property. They had none at this point in time. We felt the next best suitable use for the property was to go with residential since it was already in a residential capacity and wanted to move towards a PRD so we can come forward with the plan that you shall see here in a minute. I'll give you a couple quick views of the existing site. This is actually at the, along Ragland Avenue back into the property. So you can see pretty much the property is well overgrown with existing trees and shrubs and vegetation. This is a view south and in towards the property, towards the athletic fields. This is a view back down Ragland Avenue, back towards Ragland Court subdivision. So you can see the, the existing homes, the structure of the roadway itself. And these are a few views of the homes adjacent to the property and then also within the uh, community itself. This is a view along Alumni Drive looking back in towards the site. So this is a, you know, you can see the beauty of the campus and we're hoping that the proposal that we have in front of you tonight will help enhance that uh, portion of Alumni Drive but also the community around it. Uh, the plan itself, 23 single family detached cottage style homes on a, a, a roughly 2.68 acres for roughly about 8.6 billion units per acre. Uh, we're looking at roughly 50% of this property remaining as some type of green space, whether it's usable or actually landscape areas around the actual units themselves. Uh, these will be private streets and or drives within the uh, subdivision itself. Uh, there'll be sidewalks throughout the uh, overall development that will create a very walkable uh, community for itself. And then also these will all be underground utilities. I think the main body of this project is more or less the actual central green or kind of mimic a campus green more or less kind of standpoint in regards to being adjacent to the university on that side. And I'll get into some more of the specifics about the, that portion of the development itself here in a moment. I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture itself. Like I talked about, there are two story buildings. They're modeled on a college, cottage style architecture, so given a very quaint kind of feel in regards to the size of the homes themselves looking at a minimum 1,200 square feet of livable space per unit. Again, a mixture of two and three bedroom homes. Each home will have a rear patio that will be screened in as a, a, so they create a little quiet space in the back of the unit for as much as we're going to be providing open uh, recreational space in front of it. And then these will also be sold under horizontal property regimes so the maintenance will be maintained by the uh, HOA itself. 
building it themselves, the fronts will be primarily masonry products with brick and stone and a cement board siding. Uh, there will be only vinyl and permitted in the uh, soffits, dormers, and trim work. And the front of the homes will have a covered front porch or stoop to go along with that field that will help enhance the overall front appearance in regards to the uh, public realm that's in front of it with the public green space. Side elevations will be uh, our, uh, cementitious fiberboard with vinyl only trim soffit dormer areas. The rears themselves will have a rear doorway, and then we'll also incorporate the cement fiber board siding with vinyl only in those usual spaces and trim soft and dormer areas. When you get back to the uh, overall focus of the development outside of the architecture, and that's the large amount of open space, but primarily the main body of the open space is the large lawn space that we have incorporated, like I said. This measures roughly about 90 by 140 feet, so it's a pretty large green space. Uh, we'll take advantage of this space by creating that large lawn area in the central area there. Um, regards to playing frisbee, kickball, soccer, you know, throwing some ball, football, that kind of stuff. So you go to open space recreational area for those residents that live, in, with, live within the community itself. Another portion of this will be incorporating uh, entrance signage or monuments at the uh, new entrance off of Raglan Avenue as you come into this to kind of formalize your, your entrance into the development itself. I'm looking at, again, we added in regards to the amount of sidewalk space we have around this court, adding in some bench spaces at the north and south. So as the uh, residents are doing their daily strolls or just want to take a minute and relax from their daily grind, uh, we'll provide these uh, spaces as w uh, for seating as places along the way. And again, we're incorporating some bike racks being next to a campus in anticipation for potential professors or staff from the university buying into these or even students, you know, making purchase or you know, anything like that. Uh, also, young professionals and potentially empty nesters as uh, potential buyers, providing these you know, accessories for uh, these amenities for the buyers themselves. And I think the main, fo main focal feature besides the lawn will be the fire pit and seating area. This will be kind of more or less the overall gathering space for the residents of the development. It'll be a great little place for you know, evenings such as we've got now going on with the fall coming up. It'll be nice cool evenings to go out and sit by the fire and have a conversation with your neighbor. Regards to the access, access to the right to the uh, development itself will actually come off of East Main Street, off of Raglan Court, and then come through the Raglan Court subdivision and back up to Raglan Avenue. So uh, you have one main entrance in and out of the development itself. Along with this, there's a portion of Raglan Avenue that's kind of not been taken care of at this point in time. So there's a, about 420 feet of Raglan Avenue that we're going to go ahead and do a uh, uh, pavement widening on this so we'll be widening the roadway out to a 20 foot 22 foot wide pavement section with two foot shoulders to uh, allow better access from the existing pavement that's more up to city standards and I'm really bringing this up to city standards to provide direct access into the into uh, Walker station again like I said we we'll be incorporating signage monuments there we're also incorporating a, a sidewalk stub towards Alumni Drive. We've discussed some connectivity with MTSU in regards to pedestrians back to Alumni Drive, so we're providing at least a stub at this point in time until uh, we can work out some kind of negotiation with MTSU in regards to providing a pedestrian connection back to Alumni Drive so that if there are students and or professors or anybody that's associated with MTSU, they have a means to ride that bike or walk back over to campus to get to school, teach classes, or work at the, at the university itself. Appreciate your time and consideration tonight in this matter and the, this development. I think it's going to be a great project for the MTSU area and also the city of Murfreesboro. And I'm open for any questions now or after the public hearing. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mulchin? Mr. Chairman, Bromley? Chairman Wade, one thing that I wanted to mention that I neglected to mention in my presentation, if this rezoning ends up getting approved, there will be a companion right-of-way abandonment request that will follow on its heels. Um, because as I mentioned, there is right of way of Ragland Avenue that uh, that would have to be abandoned to accommodate this request as well as that unnamed right of way that doesn't show up on the on the the map that you have before you thank you thank you Mr. Marching you're welcome public hearing is now open for anyone for or against The hearing is now closed. Mr. Staff, anybody? I'm just, I'm concerned about the one entrance. Is uh, that? The 
we considered that. We also uh, requested that they contact MTSU to try to get access to the adjacent uh, road. And it is my understanding, we might want to get Mr. Mulchan back up. It is my understanding MTSU denied access to that. There's only one way in, and they're pretty much landlocked. You've got a parking lot at one end that's MTSU property, and if they if they don't grant access, they don't have a choice. Okay. So that is true. We did reach out to MTSU to look at a connection back to you know, Alumni Drive for a secondary point of ingress egress to the property, and they did not want us to you know, attach to their private roadway structure and add some more traffic to it on that side. So. Okay. Mr. Mulchan. Go ahead. Ms. Jones. Thank you. Um, on the landscaping, so like page 20 in our book, is that is that when we have a plan like this, is that what we have for the landscape plan? Like my, my question is, like if I look at the houses, on the landscape plan, there's nothing around any of the houses. The pictures of the houses have landscaping around them. But what governs and what rules? You know, the landscape plan doesn't show it. The uh, we'll be from a standpoint of the PRD, Willie will be um, putting in landscaping around the foundations of the homes. I didn't state that during the presentation. That'll be part of the overall development package to go with it. The package that you see in front of us more or less talks about the uh, along the western boundary, as you can see on page 20, the yellow set to the western side, which has the yellow line. We're going to be incorporating a type a buffer with that so it'll be a 10 foot wide buffer on that so it'll help kind of give a little bit of some buffering between us and the existing properties next door mm -hmm. but the other three sides will be incorporating our typical perimeter landscaping yards that we incorporate with that but we're going to enhance that by taking it up a notch from the typical perimeter buffer that only allows us for you know allows for or asks for, requires for uh, trees planted every 40 foot we're going to be actually installing a type a buffer along those other three sides so more or less we're putting a type a buffer along all the perimeters on this side. But internally, around the homes themselves, there will be landscaping and foundationally front sides and rear to you know, help maintain making that. And then again, with the park space and stuff like that, we'll be adding you know, supplemental landscaping to go in that to really make it feel like a, a very inviting space to come out and enjoy, especially around like the fire, you know, the fire pit area, kind of putting some ornamental trees and such like that. And then again, where we've incorporated those bench seating areas, wouldn't be, you know, it would be very helpful to, as we represented on there, putting some trees that around that. So as time goes, those become some shaded spaces for those who are out walking in the middle of summer, have a good shaded space to relax and enjoy the, you know, enjoy their day. Yeah, that, that was another one of my questions. Like the picture of the fire pit, I realize it's a, you know, it's just got some shrubs around it, but what looks like on the the plan, it would have the, the shade trees like you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we really wanted to kind of make that a significant. Where there's inconsistencies, are we then saying that the, the, the more landscaping in whichever it is, is what it would be? Is that right? Right. The, the images that are portrayed in here are more or less images to give you ideas of what we're anticipating on the looks and feels of what we're looking for from the standpoint of the fire pit area, the seating area, that kind of stuff. So uh, we can definitely go back and enhance the landscape chapters in this book and add some more stuff to be more specific about what we're going to do in regards to landscaping around the foundations and also within the spaces themselves. I just want to make sure that, you know, because I, I love the way it looks in the pictures that you've given of the homes but then it's not on the landscape plan. So I don't want to end up with the homes are installed and say the landscape plan didn't call for any planting around the house. Totally understand and agree with so you. So we'll, we'll go back and add some more to it. You know. Ms. Ms. Jones, on page 21, the second to last bullet point uh -huh. references the, uh, the base of building um, landscaping that'll be required around three sides of, of all the buildings. But certainly as Mr. Mulchan said, he can add some additional detail into the plan and so when you require what the front and sides at the base of the buildings will have at least a three foot wide landscape strip the landscaping does have to be planted in the landscape strip i take it a certain time yes, or whatever and then you're going to maintain that like with an hoa the hoa is going to take care of all of it so two years from now it's not going to all be gone 
Okay. Correct. As being part of the horizontal property regime, the development, the HOA will take care of the grounds themselves and also the landscape around the base of the foundations of the homes as well. So yeah, there won't be won't be a fact that they'll come in and plant it, and then you know the individual homeowners won't take care of it. The actual HOA will be taking care of it, so that it will be maintained and kept neat and clean, and you know up to you know something needs to be replaced. I'm sure they'll replace it to make certain that they you know keep it look, looking good. Because the architecture does look very well, and to make certain that you complement that architecture with good landscaping as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I mean I really like the plan. I, I think I'm really excited about it. Uh, I, I just want to make sure it like turns out exactly like I'm thinking, and I don't get overexcited and not ask the questions I'm supposed to ask and all that kind of stuff. Totally understand. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Jones. Thank you. All right. What's the wishes of the commission? Oh. I think it's a very good project. I think it's well laid out, way pl well planned, um, it, it, and, and to use the term, it raises the bar of, of this particular area because it uh, it definitely uh, will be an asset in this community. So, uh, I move for approval. Second. Another person, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Staff, thank you, Mr. Morrison. Staff reports and other business, Mr. Brumley. I have one, and I think Ms. Ms. Greenwood has one as well. I uh, wanted to just put an early reminder about our special meeting on November the 8th at 7 p.m. here in the council chambers, our, our public hearing for the major transportation plan. Um, and this is also an opportunity on uh, Channel 3 to let everybody out, out there in the viewing audience know about that. The, uh, we'll be having the public hearing on our major transportation plan on November the 8th at 7 p.m. And we still have three more community meetings um, and if you have any questions about uh, where and when those community meetings will be and these will be in advance of the Planning Commission public hearing please call the Planning Department at 615-893-6441 thank you mr. Brown Ms. green thank you sir um, next Thursday at 5 o'clock the Planning Commission and City Council will ha be having a joint work session to have an introduction to and provide comments on citywide design guidelines for the city of Murfreesboro. Mrs. Jones has been on the steering committee and we did get um, recommendation from the steering committee for approval and that meeting will be in our room 218 which is upstairs, it's not in our council chambers. And it is a joint work session for the Planning Commission City Council and it's an exciting time and we wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that was going on, those who are here and of course those watching as well. We have a website, uh, or we have the city's website, and there's a link about the design guidelines on our website. Thank you, Ms. Green. Mr. Wigger? Vice Chairman, I have nothing. I have nothing. All right, I get to do this gavel, Eddie. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Great job, sir.